Best week and weekend of the year for golf fans around here. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. The Northeast Amateur kicks off official play tomorrow, Wednesday, and runs through Saturday. And of course, the CBS Charity Classic has promotional events all through the weekend. And the big competition is on Monday. So it's uh, kind of golf nirvana for people who want to watch, take notes, walk along with the best in the game on both both an amateur and, and professional level. And so uh, once again tonight we will visit with the chair of the Northeast Amateur, Ben Todd Hill, and we have a local highly accomplished player to talk to us about his career and what his expectations are for this week. So for me it's, you know, bliss. I don't have to sit here and talk about stuff other than his honor. So let's begin and welcome you in and just mention that his campaign for re-election has begun. And so that means we must have some kind of off the charts, wheels off the wagon announcement, which means that we're going to deport all over kingdom come. Anybody want to run a pool on when tweets like this just kind of run into the vapor? Next week, ICE will begin the process of removing millions of illegal aliens who found their way into the U.S. They'll be removed as fast as they come to Mexico. Uh, I don't know what kind of speeding bullet, leap tall buildings in a single bound type of video the president watched, but no one's been able to accomplish that. We don't have an immigration policy that can execute that. He knows it. ICE knows it. America knows it and the act is getting quite old. Speaking of an act getting quite old, this story appeared in the Providence Journal on Father's Day as part of kind of a father's theme for Providence Mayor Erloza spending time with his baby as part of his job. And for those of you who really aren't paying attention, you kind of go, oh, isn't that nice? But let me tell you something, this is becoming an embarrassment. I, I mentioned this on the radio program on Thursday and spoke for a couple of hours with listeners, many of whom were professional women, who were aghast at the idea that Mayor Erloza has decided that he's going to make the world his oyster and his own personal babysitting service. The idea that he's going to just bop around with his little one is an abuse of power in a way. Why do I say that? Because no one else in the city of Providence is allowed by job description to do so. Uh, by the way, it's completely disarming for the press who has a naturally antagonistic relationship with a newsmaker. You know, if you've got some serious questions to answer, like he did last week on a shooting in Providence, and the baby is bopping in your arms, it's a little hard to look the mayor eye to eye and say, Mayor, I want some serious answers to this question, while the little one is cooing. Uh, Mr. Clueless, the mayor of Providence, appeared on WPRO this morning and when confronted with the question, continued his completely zoned out mindset. Mommy and daddy were both working parents. Uh, mommy is uh, in law school, so she has a very, very demanding schedule. I love spending time with the kid, but also, you know, as parents understand that sometimes you're in a pinch, you gotta bring your kid along. And I remember one day we were at the state house and, uh, you know, we were, both mommy and daddy were going to testify. So we testified as a family. What I'm trying to do is, yeah. you know, spend time with my little boy. If someone has a fence with that, then too bad for them. This is not about a pinch, Mr. Mayor. This is about a habit. This is about something that has been happening on a regular basis. It's about elitism. You have the right and the ability to do it because there are no rules surrounding the mayoralty. But there are plenty of rules surrounding all the employees of the city. And frankly, I haven't found a professional woman on the air or in my travels that understands what you're doing, and nobody gets your weirdo agenda. Okay? So mommy and daddy ought to think about this a little more clearly. Because the message you're sending, not is that this is about great fatherhood. It's about, dude, you're whacked. Okay? And if you think you're running for governor this way, think again. 
happy to have you here to talk about it. This show says nothing about anybody it can't say to them. And it is weird for me to refer to this as a show. I'm talking about me. See, it's contagious. In the meantime, can we switch gears and just talk golf? Thank you very much. The Northeast Amateur is set for Wanamoiset. Here's the headline that grabbed everybody's attention just a, a few days ago. Tony Romo, a name that you may not attach to the golf world, but should or may in the future on a more frequent basis. The quarterback star for the Dallas Cowboys, CBS lead football commentator, is uh, quite the player. And he's been invited to the Northeast Amateur to play. He had a press conference today. I sat in and asked the question about the comparability between football and golf. What's the common ground or, or differences between that which you've, you've so excelled at in, in football and, and this thing? Uh, I think the biggest thing is just the, the technical aspect of trying to figure the game out gives you advantages. I mean, if you really know your swing and know why you're able to use the bounce, you know, why you're able to fly the ball into the wind, what it produces, I mean, um, into the grain, just there, there's a million different things you can do with golf, but football's similar. It's like you figure out what um, is the weakness in this defense, in this player, you know, in this team. In this coordinator who's calling plays, he has he's just he has to blitz when it's really important. I mean, like you got to find so much subtlety that gives you advantages. You know, I feel like golf's the same way. You just have to go find it. Uh, he was really calm, cool, collected, accommodating today when he waltzed in for his practice tea time. Didn't you think, Ben? I thought he was yeah really together. He. Uh... He just showed up a little before the press conference, and he hadn't seen Juan Moiset yet, so he's out having a practice round. And, As we um, tape, in the, in the threatening rain with the skies and all that kind of thing. But. Yeah, but, um, you know, he's been great for the last few weeks and communicating back and forth and trying to, you know, there's, there's been quite a bit of additional media uh, attention around Tony and him coming to the Northeast. So yeah. uh, it was great that he accommodated with the press conference, and, and um, you know, I enjoyed our brief conversation and look forward to getting him um, you know, getting his ear a little bit throughout the course of the week and get to know him a little bit. Ben Tuthill is the chair of the Northeast Amateur. Welcome. Great to see you again. This is Thanks. becoming a good habit between, uh, between you and me and, and uh, love to support. The, the schedule, by the way, the, the playing schedule is uh, tomorrow through Saturday. We'll post the exact schedule for you at the, at the, end, of the, at the end of the broadcast. Bringing Romo in is, is compelling. Uh, I wouldn't call it controversial, I call it compelling in, in a sense that uh, I'm not really a student of his game. Obviously it's good enough to compete in this thing. He's not going to blow up and look silly. He's going he's to be able to compete. But it's, it's provocative to bring in uh, a guy who is, I don't know, you tell me, is he at the level of our next guest and, and this incredible collegiate and other amateur field that you've got there? What are you thinking? It, it's, uh, it's tough to tell right now. I mean, I think so. I watched him absolutely stripe one off the first tee. Um, he's a big guy. He, he works on his game quite a bit. Uh, he's trying to play in top events, and this isn't his first one. He's played in the Western Amateur a few times. He's played in three PJ Tour events. He's missed the cut, but I mean, he's been on a pretty big stage playing with the best golfers in the world, amateur or professional. So I, I think he, he feels like he can hold his own. I mean, you wouldn't do it if you think you're going to your, your thought process in bringing him in is, was what? Well, my thought it's process a night, it's, it is... Definitely, it's a spark uh, for the tournament. There's it, no doubt about it that. It is. It's created a buzz around Juan Moisit, not just for the tournament, but for our club and our membership, um, which is really awesome. And I think the local sports fans, you know, in Pat's Nation here, I think will have an interest in Romo. Um, coming out and watching, and I, I, you know, I'm psyched to have him. I think it's it's great for the tournament. Fortunately, as an invitational, we can invite anybody we want. Right. And um, you know, in this instance, I have a relationship uh, that, that spans over 20 years with Noda Begay from when he, he played in the Northeast, and I caddied for him. And Noda became friendly with Tony, and, and we were together. And he asked me, you know, if he if um, I ever thought about having him in the field, and he, he said he's a great draw. And that was his comment. I said, well, I'd certainly consider it. I said, I don't have any way to get in touch with them. He's like, oh, I can get you in touch. And, and sure enough, um, it worked out. And a f about a month ago, there was an article um, through an NFL media outlet that interviewed him after he missed the um, first round qualifier for the U.S. Open. And he said he wanted to play in the U.S. mid-amateur and the Northeast amateur. Now, this was 
he hadn't been invited at that point, but that was his quote. Um, so I reached out and expressed an interest in having him this year, and he said he was definitely in. This is going back, uh, you know, three weeks, and then you know, we firmed up a schedule just in the last few days. But it's it's awesome to have him. Sure, it's uh, it definitely had some pizzazz, and uh, not that I think the tournaments ever needed that, but if there's a a question as to whether you want to come out and follow some of these incredible world-class golfers. Now you've got some celebrity chasing that you can do. We'll come back, talk about, you know, a couple other good players, and then we'll meet one. Stay with us. Some scenes from last year's Northeast Amateur. Ben Tuttle is the chair of the Northeast Amateur. Wednesday through Saturday at Juana Moisset. Uh, it's no charge. You can come. As long as you're well-behaved, you can walk with the players. And most people are who love the game. It really is a great experience. We remind people that every year. Uh, you want to pick something up on your golf swing, your short game, whatever. You're going to see all sorts of uh, incredible talent. I, you know, you know. I mean, nobody. It's no mystery to anybody who watches or listens to me that I'm a, uh, a huge golf fan, addict, and miserable player. But the the uh, the fun of it. I've been watching the NCAA championships in the last um, few years on television at the Golf Channel has really kind of gotten into that. And, yeah. and you've got this whole Final Four field, it seems, for crying out loud. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to seeing some of these kids who I watched on television who are the PGA Tours next, seems to me. Um, seems like a really good field this year. The field's awesome. You know, we've talked about Romo, but the rest of the field is really, there's there's a, so many highlights I can't, don't know where to start or stop, but you know, it's primarily become a, um, the, you know, the top collegiate players in the world come to the Northeast Amateur. It's a, it's a huge event for them. It's a Walker Cup year. Um, so, you know, Walker Cup, by the way, is the equivalent of the Ryder Cup for amateurs. Right. So, um, you know, this is a critical point in, in the season for players to do well to get a spot on that team. Um, so that always helps attract a little stronger field. You know, this year's no surprise to me. Um, with how great our field is, and you know, it's really deep. Over 75 of the players are playing collegiately, so I'd say it's it's almost turned into a college event. And, and, and I'll tell you, it's it's just it's just on these kids are so flexible and they hit it so long. I thought Tony Romo's quite. I, I, I'm going to play some audio on the radio over the week um, from the press conference day. I, I thought Tony Romo's answer to my question about his like star factor versus the anonymity. Of these incredible players, I mean, these college kids. I mean, unless you have your eye on somebody, will play out there for the most part without, you know, a huge swath of people following them. He had a great answer, didn't you, about about how how much, how much is on the line in a tournament like this for the rest of this field, the, the prominence of, of these collegiate players, and what's at stake. So they're playing under as much pressure as Romo running around with four, five, six hundred people trying to follow him, right? Yeah. I, I thought his answer was really interesting, and I, I think that it's. It's so true. I mean, it, it, this is a tough game, as we all know, regardless of what level you play at. And, you know, the, these top players are maybe a little bit more comfortable with this stage, uh, you know, than, than even Tony would be. As much as success as he's had off of the golf course, I, I would say he's going to be equally yeah, or no. Yeah, don't get rattled, do they? Not, they, they not don't, very often. They don't, no, they don't. no they've, they've grown up playing tournament golf, tournament pressure, and, and I think that's really what's changed. Uh, you know, they're... Nothing really phases them anymore, and we've seen it as we've implemented a cut, and, and how that cut line has has gotten, you know, harder and harder to make with good scoring. I mean, the player they they're all so good, and I, I you know I couldn't pinpoint one or two players that I would say you really need to watch. I'd say there's about 40 or 50 of them you really should get out and try to watch because mm -hmm. they are that good. Yeah. All right. Listen. Congratulations on uh, a Thanks. great field, and and the Romo thing is a great promotional plug for for the event. Uh, we'll see you out there this week. When we come back, we will meet uh, one of our local finest players, the Fighting Irish. Stay with us. So back here at the Northeast Amateur, Davis Chatfield is a Bishop Fiend grad. He lives in Attleboro. He's a member at Wanham Wasset, hometown boy, and he's got his Fighting Irish gear on. You're going to wear that all week? Think so. You gotta, Planning on it. Got to yeah. represent. Planning right? on it. Yeah. Got to represent. Yeah, exactly. Congratulations on your uh, your younger career and now your collegiate career. Uh, number one player for Notre Dame, right? Can you claim that? Is is it, it's something you don't um, really you don't you don't beat your chest over that? You just no. wherever the coach puts you, you know. Yeah, exactly. Team. Yeah. No. Um, I'll play anywhere. You know, one, two, three, four, five. You know, it's whatever coach wants it to be that week, and um, I'll just play whatever spot. He's What's your learning in. experience been like at Notre Dame? Um, it's been great. You know, I've been a lot better with just time management, not only on the golf course, but 
uh, academically as well. Um, you know, it's, it's great. I get to become a better person, you know, on and off the course. I wasn't going to ask you about yeah. it, but you said you were pretty loose on it. I guess you missed last semester ac for academic reasons. Yes. And I had asked somebody, what, is he a party? And it was a typical, no, he practices too much. He's a prodigious practice. Yeah. Pra you just love the golf game so much. You're, you missed a couple classes or something like that, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, My goodness. You know, I. I signed up. I haven't done much work for, for, for working on my short game, but I'm getting close. I know how it feels. Yeah. It's like, oh man, I just want if I could just be, if I could just yeah. get it. Oh, oh, I gotta be, gotta be somewhere. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. It's addictive. Um, it is obsessive it is. in a way. Yeah, it is for sure. Um, you know, I I signed my NLI to play golf, and I kind of always had that mindset of you know I represent this school um, on the golf course, but. I have to in the classroom as well, so I learned that this semester. But um, all right, good. So tell me about your game uh, and and this whole Northeast Amateur event. Uh, is how many times have you played here? Uh, this will be my fourth year. It's got to be really cool. Yeah, it to is. be a member yeah. now to be nationally ranked to have this in your own backyard. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you have a competitive advantage because you're in the golf course so well? Um, a little bit, yeah. But um, I will say that the course plays a lot different this week. Because um, they change it up. Yeah, they make the, it hard. the roughs, you know, I don't know how many inches. And then the, the greens are so tough and, and tricky, firm. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's nice to know, I guess, the main spots where not to miss it. Once it hit off the tees and stuff like that, I think there's a little advantage. But still got to hit every shot and put the ball in the hole at the end of the day. Ben and I were talking about how you young guys just don't feel it. I have to tell you, I'm in a, you know, I'm in a member guest and, you know, I need to make a couple of pars to get a hundred bucks back out of the red pool. You know what I mean? And, 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 I'm, yeah. and I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. You, What's pressure feel like for you uh, at, on this at this competitive level? Do you feel it? Um, yeah, we definitely still feel it. Um, you know, I think the main thing is to let the butterflies fly in the right direction. I guess um, we always, you know, we'll get nervous before us. Obviously, like tournaments like this and stuff, but you kind of have to embrace it and um, and not let it kind of overtake you because that's when it can go south. I guess. Do you do a lot of psychological work? Um, not so much. I've just always mentally been pretty strong, so I kind of hold to that, I guess, and, and um, it's one of my strong suits, I guess. What's your other strong suit in, in your game? Um, what, what would people say, yeah, I'll tell you, Davis does the what? Yeah, I would say short game. Um, just that's where it all is, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, that's where tournaments are won, I feel like, and um, I've always had that um, just because I practice so many hours um, a year on it, so i got to definitely make it up because I can't off the tee. Do you find so. it fun to practice? I do. Um, obviously, it can get a little boring sometimes, you know, doing the same thing. You know, I've been asked that so many times, you know, it must get super boring. But um, for me, it's just, I feel like I get better at the end of the day and I can, you know, sleep better knowing that I did something productive today. And um, yeah, I find a, a joy in it, I guess. Notre Dame uh, just missed out on the regionals, I guess. Uh, you being back on the roster will help them. As I was saying to Ben, the the number of outstanding collegiate players here is just, I, I think, overwhelming in a yeah. way. Um, and because now television spends a lot of time at your level, it, they're becoming at least known quantities to the golf addict world out there. Uh, you know most of these guys? Yeah, I do. Um, I played in uh, a lot of tournaments, you know, just collegiately with a lot of these guys. I know Ben said, you know, 75 guys here playing a collegiate team. Um, and yeah, over the years, you know, I've just gotten to know more and more people, um, and it's, it's been really cool. You had so. a great last week, correct? Yes. In Rochester, New York? Yeah, yeah. Tell me about the Monroe tournament. What happened there? Yeah, um, I ended up in, in second place. Uh, it was one of my big tournaments coming back. Um, obviously not being able to play in the spring was tough, and um, but I worked hard um, in school too, um, not just on the course. but. Uh, it was really nice to, to come back from that, and it's a big momentum boost for this week. Is that another one of those tournaments that adds to your resume for the Walker Cup type of thing? It is. Are you? Yeah. Are, are, are you do you feel like? And forgive me because I'm not well schooled on this. Are mm. you? Are you of caliber to, to be um, considered for that kind of thing? Or you got I some work to do? Yeah, I think I have some work to do. I don't think I'm. 
quite there. Um, hopefully next year I'll have a, a little better resume, but um, I like where my game is headed going forward. And this Northeast Dam is, is interesting in that it's a four-day event, and that's that's all that you know that reflects a professional tournament. Right. Even the senior turn, uh, tournaments are. Uh, you know, three days for the most part, unless the majors. But I do notice that these NCAA tournaments are grinds. There's the yeah. metal play, and then there's the, if you go the whole way, I mean, you're playing for the whole week. So yeah. you're used to yeah. bang, 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 yeah. bang. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, the old adage about in football, you know, any given Sunday, well, any given day in golf can be wonderful, but this tournament is going to be four terrific days, right? Correct. How, yeah. do you, how do you prepare for that? Um, well, I think Monroe is a great prep because it was a very similar course and it was also four rounds. Um, it was brutal conditions and um, it, I think it was, you know, just great prep. I hadn't had that in a while, you know, playing four days in a row. It's obviously a grind. You got to be in it for every, every one of the 72 holes. Um, you can never turn the switch on and off. You, you have to grind it out, really, and um, just kind of add your score up at the end. But uh, you know, I think we just you just kind of get used to it. You know, you, you just take it one shot at a time, and um, you know, it's a lot of it's a lot of fun. Though. Mental game is not just about performance, right? I mean, it's not about those seconds of a golf swing. It's about what you're thinking about between them. Right. That's yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, definitely. I forget the calculation. There's some ridiculous number about the actual time spent with the actual activity of hitting the golf ball and all that kind of stuff. But you mm -hmm. spend four hours on a golf course, yeah. there's a lot going on in your head yeah. about what's coming up next. Yeah, exactly. Advice um, for the viewer out there who uh, would love to have a moment of your uh, excellence on a golf course and what they ought to be thinking about? Um, I guess, you know, you just got to give every shot 100%. Uh, you can't just you know kind of if you there's an easy hole coming up you can't just you know kind of take a careless swing you gotta always have it because you don't know you can't you know tell where the ball is going to end up um you know where you want it to end up but it doesn't obviously end up there so uh always giving it um everything you got is, is definitely you gonna have a little gallery this week i hope so local I guess boy it done good yeah i guess any pressure to win it I because play. you're local or? um you like, know last year i came in i think 15th so um, trending in the right direction, I think. And um, after last week, I think, I think I can. But um, we'll see on Saturday. What's your tea time tomorrow? Do you know? Uh, nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Yeah. Good time. Yeah, I might, right. uh, might walk a few holes with you. Cool. Uh, that won't bother you, right? No, no, not at all. No. You don't mind if, like, between shots, I say, hey, man, what were you thinking right there? Yeah, yeah just, that's fine. Just yeah, you can pause. <laughs> listen a little bit. You know, that doesn't bother you? Um, it shouldn't bother me. No, you're, you're fine. <laughs> I could be lethal around a golf course. Congratulations on your you. on your scholarship at Notre Dame. Getting back Thank into you. class, some learning lessons, uh, uh, well experienced, mm -hmm. and uh, go win this thing tomorrow. Shake it Thank up a little you. bit. Will do. And, uh, you know. Tell Romo to calm down. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll take over. <laughs> Sounds good. Good to see you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Northeast Amateur schedule when we get back. And uh, here is the schedule for the Northeast Amateur. Again, it's Wednesday through Saturday. Uh, they do make a cut at the end of the week. Uh, but I would recommend, if you're a golf fan, just to, to get out there and, and walk with these kids. Uh, I think you just love the walk. Warm ice, it's beautiful. And uh, their play is just, it's just incredible. And, of course, uh, we may be able to spend some time talking about the CVS coming up this weekend too. Like I said, if you love golf, it's a great week in Rhode Island. You have a great night. We'll talk to you tomorrow on the radio at 3 on WPRO. Thanks for tuning in. Good night.